welcome and thank you for being here. I want to talk about a very specific problem, which is this. Low-income students are about half as likely to graduate college with a STEM degree as are middle-class and more affluent students. And this is a problem that doesn't even fully take into account the situation because that stat doesn't distinguish between associate's degrees and bachelor's degrees. It doesn't look at the quality of the institution that the students went to. It doesn't look at the difference between a nursing degree and someone going to med school. And the thing is that low-income students and black and Latino students are just as likely to want to pursue STEM, but somehow we aren't giving them the preparation to be successful when they get to the college level. And the mathematics they encounter is stopping them somewhere. So I want to look at this. We usually look at this through the lens of test scores or something like that, but I want to look at it through a different lens. We're going to look at the slides from the Gateway Physics major course at the University of Michigan, a freshman course. And I want you to think about what kind of knowledge a student needs to understand these slides. So for example, this is just like, a, from the professor's perspective, a fuzzy intro slide, but half the class is going to recognize a particle accelerator. Half of the class isn't, and it's just going to see some random picture there. But already there's a difference being formed. Look at this slide here. Look at the language on it. Mechanics is the study of macroscopic motion. Kinematics, dynamics, look at the way that's structured. If students don't have experience interpreting that kind of language, that very sophisticated language, that's going to be really hard. This is a homework problem from a freshman year calculus class. Look at how involved, I mean, don't try to read it. Look at how involved it is. It talks about GPS systems too. If students don't have experience navigating questions of that difficulty and complexity, again, a huge difference. Most of us think of education as a line. You go to elementary school, you go to middle school, you go to high school, and then you go to college. But for students who are very successful in STEM degrees, that's not actually how it is. For them, they do robotics contests, they do independent research and reading, and they go to advanced study summer programs, and they do all of these things that prepares them for another level of thinking. And I want you to imagine being a student from a low-income community who doesn't have this kind of background, goes to colleges in the same classes, and has, to, and, has to, and has to get a grade in that class. There's a big difference between college ready, doing well in your high school classes, and STEM college ready. And we need to think about how we can redesign the system so that all of our students can be exposed to this ecosystem of opportunities so that they can enter into a STEM college ready level, so that they can be ready to think on the level that college requires. And we want the students who love it to be able to go there, basically. So I'm gonna tell you that this is possible. This is happening in a few programs around the country. Um, our program works with the lowest income middle schools in New York City. We have 36 partner schools. The students come to us for the summer and they're studying number theory, combinatorics, graph theory, incidence, geometry. This is in seventh grade. Programming, astrophysics, and then we work with the students to transition them to that ecosystem, to other programs for advanced study, because that's what's going to prepare them to go into STEM and to be really successful there. So, taking a step back, I want to think about four action items you can take back to think about how to help your students be STEM college ready, how to help them be ready for what happens when they get to college. The first thing I want to tell you is just help them pursue their passions. Help them go beyond. Help them find YouTube videos about what they're interested in, apply to summer programs, do their own reading or science fair projects or anything because they love it and that will prepare them. <laughs> Rise above minimum benchmarks. Assessment right now is all about minimum benchmarks. That's not what it should be. It should be about helping each student find the most challenge that they can find. Encourage your students to go beyond and to find that challenge and to push themselves. They'll like it more. Connect them with other opportunities. These programs out there, many of them have scholarships, many of them are free. They're in all different communities. They're engineers and professors who want to give back. Find them these opportunities to connect and go beyond when the fixed curriculum can't do that for you. And finally, create a community. It matters so much to know that there are others like others out there like you who love this stuff. Make a math club, make a robotics team, make a place in the school where they can find each other and get them out there, help them go beyond. Because we've all had that student who's ready for more and we're like, they'll be fine. 
But the truth is that when they get to college, they'll need to have done more, and you want to push them to do that. I want, I want to invite you to get in touch with me if you want to talk about this further. I'm happy to provide more ideas if I have sparked an interest in you. Thank you very much.